Welcome to By Faith with Frank Shelton. Frank speaks at the schoolhouse. church house, and has even been interviewed at the White House, but is most grateful to speak life into your house. Now, here's Frank Shelton. The wealthiest places in the world is not corporate America or boardrooms, it's cemeteries. Yes. Where people, instead of living by faith, got shackled in fear and they buried greatness. And yes. I just think we're going to have to give an account for not only every idle word, but every task that was left undone. Yes. So I tell people, Swing for the fence. Yes. Because you can't strike out with the Lord, amen? <laughs> you sure can't. Now, you uh, must have studied Finney. Oh, I love him. I preach, I closed with the revival the other night in Alabama about Finney. Really? Yes, Dr. Graham. I love the greats. We think everyone's the best today, but I like the folks from the past the best. Hmm. Tell me about what Finney said. Well, in 1832, Andrew Jackson was in the White House, and the abbreviated version is the chief of staff to President Jackson said, Mr. President, there's a fire evangelist named Charles Finney coming up the eastern seaboard. It would do us well to hear what the man of God has to say about the Word of God. And to his credit, the most powerful person on the planet, President Jackson, the next day walked 10 blocks to hear what this preacher had to say. And the place was packed. People are hanging over the balcony and everyone's there but the preacher. And he was alone in the corner on the floor like a snake in the dark because he was getting alone with the light even in the dark. You'll never mm. have a word to say to millions if you don't hear from God in private. That's right. So his aide came up and said, Mr. Fenny, we're late. You're holding everybody up. Quick, come on. And he was on the floor getting alone with God. And he said, thank you. And he said, well, maybe you didn't hear this. The second most in the second row is the most powerful man in the world, President Andrew Jackson. You're holding him up. And again, he had his face in the Bible not to be rude. He said, thank you. And he got on all fours and goes, you're holding us up. Please, let's run. But Fanny knew that government's power was one thing, but God was everything. Yes. And he came out and looked to a capacity crowd with authority of heaven, but humility on earth. And he began to weep like Niagara Falls. And through blurry vision, he said, it's come to my attention that President Jackson is in the house and I'm honored. And then he found him in the second row and he looked at him and he said, but Mr. President, if you don't repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll split hell wide open like everybody else. And what I love about Fenny and Dr. Graham and yourself and John the Baptist, good people tell crowds what they want to hear. God's men tell the crowds what they need to hear. Yes. Repent, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because John wasn't looking for followers on Facebook. He didn't care if you liked his Instagram account. He didn't care if you liked him. He just was dying to know, did you love him? him. Because John and religion was one thing, but a relationship with Jesus is everything. Amen. I am Rachel Barbeau, former 17-year national sportscaster, first female host on Sirius XM on the College Channels, Heisman voter. Listen, how would you like to join me and some special friends for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity trip to the Holy Land with some of today's top sports and Christian music celebrities? I'll be accompanied by Ray Lewis, Daryl Strawberry, and former world champion wrestler Sting and Nikita Koloff along with a very special musical performance by Newsboys and DC Talk superstar Michael Tate as he performs with his sister, Gaither vocal group member Linda Randall Tate. This is a once-in-a-lifetime event, and it takes place Easter 2022. Visit icondestinations.com for details on this all-inclusive eight-day land trip that will include visits to Tel Aviv, Nazareth, River Jordan, Jerusalem, and the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. 
All of this along with meals and first class bus transportation. And you get to hang out with us and attend a special private concert by Michael and Linda Tate. All of this for $3,100, $3,150 to be exact. Book today as space is limited. And for a limited time, when you purchase the first trip, the second person travels at half price. Again, contact Icon Destinations at icondestinations.com or 1-800-679-9201 today and book your spot on this special Champions Holy Land trip, April 11th to the 18th, 2022. If you would like to bring Frank to your next event or outreach, visit www.frankshelton.com. Hey, Sharon. How are you doing? <laughs> it's Richard, Richard Thomas. I hope you and all of your loved ones are doing great and that you're all safe and healthy during this crazy time that we're going through, right? So crazy, but we will get through it together, won't we? Anyway, Sharon, I am reaching out to you today by special request from Frank. Yes, Frank got in touch with me and asked me to reach out to you and send you so much love and admiration and care. He just wanted me to let you know how great you are. And I am, I am so happy and proud to be delivering this message. There's nothing better. I mean, I'm a dad, you know, so man, when one of my kids reaches out with some love, I take it and I run with it because there is no better feeling. And I know you know that too. You're a Waltons fan. That's what Frank said. I really appreciate that. I'm so grateful to you, as I am to everybody who made that show a success, because wow, it did so much for me, and I loved it, and just had a, well, we had a ball, and we're still like a big old family, all of us, truly. So you know what I'd like to do? Because you're so great, and I know you're so great, because Frank told me so. I'd love to invite you, if it's okay with you, to be an honorary Walton. Would that be cool? Sharon Walton. I don't think we've had a Sharon Walton. Welcome to the family, Sharon. Now, I know that you help out, right, with the ministry, the Frank Shelton Global, with bookings and things. Good for you. Good for you. I think that is great. He says you're big on faith and family values. And I am, you know, my hat's off to you. I got a lot of admiration for you, not just as a mom, obviously, but as a person. And I want to send you lots and lots of love. Frank says that you are the glue holding everything together. <laughs> well, that's a mom thing, isn't it? It really, really is. Anyway, Sharon, I just want to finish by saying, good night, John Boy. Good night, Mary Ellen. Good night, Frank. Good night, Sharon. Frank and I think you're great. And we send you so much love. Take care and be well. I am the son of Sharon and Frank Shelton. I'm Frank Jr. And um, I was born on Capitol Hill. Most people come to Washington to work. I was born to work there. My mom literally thought she was going into labor in the halls of Capitol. She worked for the U.S. Capitol Historical Society. And here dad was with the Capitol Police. So um, it was just an honor. I was born President's Day weekend. My son, Andrew, was born the day President Obama was sworn in. So he was born Inauguration Day. I was born President's Day. My mom's the 4th of July. So if you cut me, it will bleed red, white, and blue. <laughs> but um, what's neat is I wanted to do three things. I wanted to go into politics. I wanted to preach or protect the president. And I was blessed to pursue. Now, those, those are as far opposite. That's what they say. You politics get. and religion <laughs> don't mix. I tell people that's not true. Drinking and driving don't mix. And sadly, no joke, too many do it. Sometimes the things we need to talk about the most, we participate the least. All right. And I believe God didn't just die to save us, he's dying to use us. Yes. So I was gonna go into politics, preach or protect the president, and I was blessed to pursue all three by my 35th birthday. I feel like Tom Hanks could have played me. I feel like I'm Forrest Gump. <laughs> I met the president again. But it's wild, I was a, a speechwriter for the House Majority Leader of Congress 
this is a neat tidbit. We don't go around saying this, but we're proud of the fact my cousin married former Majority Leader Dick Armey's son. Really? He was the, not local, the National House Majority Leader Dick yes. Armey, Republican from Texas. My cousin married Armey's son. My Aunt Barbara went to the senior prom in 1957 with House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer, the number two Democrat in Congress. So Hoyer was Majority Leader, and now that the Republicans are back over, he's the Minority Leader, so it's Pelosi him, but he's just two away from Speaker of the House. Uh -huh. But at one time, he was House Majority Leader, Democrat from Maryland, but my cousin married the House Majority Leader son, Republican from Texas. So two House Majority Leaders of two different parties, you want to see some fireworks. It's not Fourth of July. Come to a Shelton family reunion. Can I get an amen? But what's neat is um, I was a speechwriter for the congressman. I was appointed the youngest in 60 years by the Senate Sergeant at Arms, Howard Green, now deceased. 5,000 people worked for the U.S. Senate, but only three of us worked on the floor of the United States Senate. I worked half the day as a bipartisan figure with the Republicans, the other half with the Democrats. I then worked for the governor of Maryland. I was a fundraiser for the Republican National Committee. I worked in three White Houses of three presidents of two political parties. I really believe success is having more than just one political preference at your funeral, because Paul was all things to all men. Oh, so, um, and, and then because the long lineage of law enforcement with a family that protected 26 U.S. presidents, the book was birthed. My ancestor hand carried President Abraham Lincoln across the street, Good Friday, Ford's Theater, April 14th, 1865. It was 151 years ago this month that my ancestor hand carried Lincoln across the street. He carried greatness and death, a president. In 1912, my ancestor on my mother's side, William Easton, was the chief foreman with the U.S. Park Service. He was the head gardener or foreman. He had just put in for retirement 30 years. He lived in Georgetown. And someone came up to him and said, we just got this goodwill gift from another nation. Plant these small seeds. And he said, guys, I've already retired. And they said, no, you got to plant these seeds. Well, one colleague was thinking it seemed so small, the seeds. And true story, it was the coldest winter weather of Washington record. And I don't know what was worse, the chilling complaints of a colleague or the cold climate of the city of Washington. <laughs> But you've heard of Whistle While You Work. He got on his hands and knees with a kerosene lamp in 1912. And it was so frigid, they almost didn't even survive that first winter. So one guy says it seemed so small. He planted for two years a seed that everyone says will amount to nothing. In 1912 to 1914, around the Tidal Basin. And today, this April, every year, one million people come to see what he planted. He hand planted the iconic cherry blossoms. It was a gift from Okinawa, Japan. Japan. And what seemed so small blossomed to something big and beautiful. And in DC, it wasn't magnificent, it was monumental. Yeah. But he carried greatness with a plant, the other carried greatness with a president. One carried greatness in death, the other with life, but they both carried greatness. You get off on tangents. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now, who are you Amen. other than this? Okay, well, that's a great question. I'm a child of Frank and Sharon, but most importantly, I'm a child of the King. Yes. I gave my heart to Jesus at age seven, 1979. And three years later, at a vacation Bible school, at a church running 33, we had a contest. Whoever brought the most kids, the church would win. And I said, what's the prize? And they said, a chance to win this stuffed animal called Myrtle the Turtle. Well, it was made with love from the pastor's wife. We didn't have a lot of money. We were running 33. Nine of the 33 was in that pastor's family. Five was mine. 14 of 33. I preached at First Baptist Dallas twice to their youth. I've preached at First Baptist Monterey. I've been to a few churches, but you'll never hear me say the big church or the little church. It's all big with God. Yes. But the church running 33, when I heard Jesus was the only way to heaven, I decided then in 1982 at age 10, when you ask, who am I? I wanted people not really to know who I was, but who he is. And God used me in 1982 to bring 22 kids to vacation Bible school in one week. And then three years later, I'm sharing the gospel with Sylvester Stallone, my godmother and I are in Hollywood. But I didn't start sharing Jesus with famous. I started with friends. I started by my house. Now I'm in Hollywood. But if you share Jesus with an enmity, you won't chicken out with celebrity. 
And so um, I've been blessed from there. Uh, I've been a Fox News contributor in politics and religion, the same things they say they don't mix. I just, whatever your hand finds to do, do it for God's glory. So um, I've had the honor to be well with Sean Hannity and Kim Goyfield from The Five and Lauren Green's the chief religion contributor. And uh, I'm on the side, I've also been part of the White House Press Corps. I'm probably the only ordained minister It represents a Christian news publication, but when I'm in the West Wing, I'm probably the only ordained minister at that time in the room. So we wear a few different hats, but my head and heart <clears throat> and hands is just to point as many people to Jesus, but I'm just a child of the King. Well, that's wonderful. I bet. I mean, you, found, you finally got to that. I bet. <laughs> I'm a the child devil. of the King. I bet. And I'm looking at you right there in yeah. the book with Sylvester Stallone. Yes, I love Rocky. How did that happen? Well. That's a great question. My godmother and I went individually to see Rambo II in 1985. I'm 13 years old. I'd seen the movie twice. I'm slow. One, I love Sly, but I'm so slow. It takes me two hours to watch 60 minutes. And this usher back in the day gave me a piece of paper and I said, what's that? He said, it's a chance to spend the weekend with Sylvester Stallone. Well, I'd already seen the movie twice. I said, but where were you the last two times? He rolled his eyes and said, kid, you're not gonna win. You have a better chance of getting struck by lightning. So if you got all 10 right, they would put it in a barrel at a local rock radio station. And I walked out of there and he said, well, you're still not gonna win. So my godmother, I actually have a fairy godmother. One, Judy led my mother to the Lord. I believe we not only keep the faith, we need to share the faith. And she came over to a picnic for my mom's birthday. And I said, Judy, did you see the new Rambo? And she goes, yeah. I said, did you like it? She goes, it was great. I said, did they give you a piece of paper? She said, yeah. I, I said, do you think you knew all 10? She goes, I think. And I said, two's better than one. I said, Judy, if I win, I'll take you. She rolled her eyes, Frankie, if I win, I'll take you. <laughs> Two months later, I get a call at nine o'clock at night. She's screaming, Frankie, I won. We're going to Los Angeles. She could have honored anyone in the world. She could have taken my mom or her friend from fourth grade, a neighbor. Anyone would have died to spend the weekend with Stallone in Beverly Hills. And they flew me, Forrest Gump, at 13 <laughs> from DC and my godmother, she bought him a Bible, black engraved gold leaf Sylvester Stallone. And on that whole flight, Satan said, whatever you do, Frank, don't mention Jesus or don't share the gospel with him. But I believe whether you're Hollywood or homeless, we need him. And I knew God did that. And I didn't want to chicken out on God. And when we stood toe to toe, I just remember thinking heaven won't be the same without you. And we presented the Bible and I wrote a picture I drew with the Romans wrote on the back. And you know what? Um, someone once said, what do you give the guy that has everything? Hmm. Give him the gospel. Amen. Because if they're saved, they'll thank you. And if they're lost, they need it. And you can have a Ferrari, but if you don't have forgiveness, you're on the fast track to missing glory. And even your heroes need Jesus. This is now by satellite from New York. And well, it's good to have you with us. Oh, hey, that, that Rocky, first Rocky, was a classic. You guys shot that thing for about 450000 It was a, <laughs> it was a wonderful piece of work. Thank you. It, it was a, a miracle. It was shot in 28 days. And who, who knew that it would end up, here we are 30 years later. And aren't you a little afraid you're going to damage the franchise or something? Well, what happened, I'll tell you, uh, Pat, is that the first one, the fifth one, or the last one in installment, just, I, I felt as though I left everybody down. It really wasn't about anything. And if you really go back to the first Rocky, people don't realize it's, the first shot is this shot of Christ, and it comes down over the, uh, the beams of the church. It says resurrection, then it goes to Rocky being pummeled. And what I was trying to say is this man has been chosen for a journey. He's at the lowest strata of society, and we're watching him eventually find Christian ideals, that he finds love, he starts to bring people together, all these, what I would call society's outcasts, and they all come together for one unified family uh, spirit, and that's how they triumph. Alone, they're not very, very strong. Together, they're invincible. Well, how about this last one? I mean, uh, Rocky well, the last is, one. Yeah, go ahead. Well, the last one exactly is now, after he has all this family core values, his wife has died. So now the wool has been, I mean, the rug has been pulled out from under him. He's at his lowest depths. He goes, how, how, can, how can this be? 
and it was a it's about pulling yourself up from the doldrums of society and of, of depression and clawing your way back up finding the light finding the spirit moving on he surrounds himself with old friends even ex-fighters that read scripture and then when he goes into the ring he goes in with a sense of kind of like he's doing God's work he's he really is on a mission well, you know, the average uh, viewer is going to say, you know, boxing, you're slamming somebody, you know, what, what happened with that Russian, you know, you were giving him everything you got so really good. <laughs> How is that Christian? Well, because, you know, there is one thing about speaking the word, but eventually you do need the crusader. Someone who goes out there and, and, and has to defend it and face evil one on one. And that's pretty much what Rocky is. And the entire Rocky series has never been about staunch reality like Raging Bull or other boxing films. It's more of a metaphor about life. And then in the end of, of Rocky, this last one, Rocky Balboa, he basically has come full circle and he just, at the very end, just disappears and, and the entire journey is over. Well, as far as the journey, I understand you personally have had an extraordinary spiritual reawakening. You want to tell us about it? Well, it is. You know, there, there was a time in there uh, where I, you know, I was very strict Catholic. And then when I got to Hollywood, and all of a sudden you're giving the key to the candy stores and temptation abounds. And I started to believe my own publicity. And no question, I admit it. I, I, I just lost my way. But every time I came back to Rocky, I was given a new shot in the arm, a new reawakening. And then I would abuse it again. And finally, there, it led to about 12 years of I just was spiraling down. And, and finally, I said, I got to stop. I have to get back to basics. And I really decided to take things out of my own hands and put it in God's hands because I always felt... I was chosen to do something. I was never a writer. I was never an exemplary student. All of a sudden, one day, I started writing Rocky. I wrote it in three days, and it wins the Oscar. And I cannot assume that I did this all on my own. I really do not believe that for, for a second. And I feel the same thing with the uh, last film, that there was a calling. I wanted to do it. And for some reason, I think, Pat, right now, mm -hmm. It's, it's a perfect message for what's going on, right? You know, the world's in upheaval. We don't have uh, certain individuals we can look up to. And Rocky's a humble man who really believes in sacrificing himself for the good of others. Well, I know people are going to want to watch it. I would, it opens tomorrow in theaters all across America. Have you got good distribution for it? Oh, it's been fantastic. I mean, so far, I mean, w when I announced this, uh -huh. I was the laughing stock of the country, but I said, you don't understand, it's really dealing with some deep core values. Now, uh, things are just happening, we're on the cover, of, uh, today I just found out we're on the cover of USA Today. It's like a miracle. It's like going back to the first one. I really believe yeah. life does repeat itself, and, and I have to give uh, my, my complete thanks to uh, all those that have supported me, and, and by the grace of God, I'm here again. Well, it's going to be exciting. I look forward to seeing it. I haven't seen it yet, but I look forward to seeing it. And we urge our viewers to join in with you. So thanks for being with us. Uh, thank you very much. God bless. Thank it's inspiring. God bless you. Well, uh, Rocky Balboa, ladies and gentlemen, opens tomorrow in theaters across the country. You don't want to miss an amazing allegory of uh, a Christ figure coming against the uh, obstacles of life and overcoming. It'll be a tender moment for you, and bless your Christmas. 7.7 7 billion people call planet Earth home. Sadly, 152,000 people died today. 152,000 died yesterday, and 152,000 will die tomorrow. According to the CDC, 2.8 million people die annually in America alone. From America to Antarctica to Australia, most people have no clue where they will spend eternity. Opposed to sit on the sidelines, we elected to get in the game. Regardless of providing relief during natural disasters, distributing food and clothes to the poor, helping eradicate human sex trafficking nationally and globally, influencing influencers, motivating world-class athletes, 
investing in students at public and private school assemblies, ministering to powerful politicians, counseling heads of state, or preaching the gospel at citywide crusades at home or massive sports stadiums abroad. From coast to coast and around the globe, we exist to reach the lost at any cost. From London, England, Guatemala, the Bahamas, Jamaica, Mexico, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Romania, Paris, Philippines, Brazil, Africa, Tokyo, Pakistan, India. 7.7 .7 billion people call planet Earth home. Sadly, Earth is not our final destination. We have two options, heaven or hell, but not both. And hell is too long to be wrong. We're reaching the world one soul at a time. Time is ticking, people are hurting. And our mission is to offer hope to folks on Main Street to Wall Street. From our house to Hollywood. And schoolhouses, church houses, and even the White House. Time is ticking. People are hurting, but help is on the way. At Gardner-Webb University, we partner with our students to redefine the classroom, foster transformative experiences, and cultivate a community that celebrates service and learning together. A student-centered experience and rigorous academics prepare our students for careers and lives as diverse and as amazing as they are. Gardner-Webb University, ignite your future. If you would like to bring Frank to your next event or outreach, visit www.frankshelton.com. To order an autographed copy of Frank's book, Carrying Greatness, go to frankshelton.com and click on Merch. A signed copy is only $25, and if you order now, you'll get free shipping. Don't delay. Order your copy today.